These changes will shake up what needs to be shaken up while maintaining the momentum and the continuity and the stability that Australia needs as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic and recession. Those priorities, again, to roll out of that vaccine and to suppress the virus, the economic recovery that is well underway with more Australians employed now than there were before the pandemic began, to guarantee those essential services that Australians rely on each and every day, the health services, the disability services, the aged care services, uh, the income support, to stand up for Australia, whether it's against big multinationals or within our own region, to stand up for our interests and ensure we've got what is necessary to back that up, and to continue the important work of caring for our country, as Indigenous Australians have done for centuries and centuries and thousands of years. There'll be no changes in areas such as Treasury, finance, health, social services that go to many of those priorities. But what we must do is address the government's agenda with the changes that we're making and do so, I think, with a fresh lens. And a fresh lens in particular to achieving the outcomes, the results that we all want for Australian women right across the country. Getting these results for Australian women will be achieved through collaboration. They'll be achieved through listening. They'll be achieved by acting together. They won't be achieved by dividing Australians and setting them apart and having further conflict. It'll be achieved by Australians coming together to deal with these very serious and significant issues. The changes I'm announcing today will once again provide the strongest ever female representation in an Australian government cabinet. But it's not just about the size of the female contingent in my cabinet, but it's the skills and the experience, it's the perspective and it's the collaboration they bring to our nation's most difficult tasks. And that indeed extends beyond the Cabinet. Women taking up, as they must, as they should, as I very much want them to do, and as they are so keen to do so, these senior roles and in particular the important portfolios right across the government. This is about getting the right input. This is about getting the right perspective. It's about getting that lens on the policy challenges that we're facing and the policy development and delivery work that needs to be undertaken and doing it so in those key agencies of government that are so important for achieving this change. These appointments will be further enhanced by the establishment of a new cabinet task force to drive my government's agenda in response to these key issues involving women's equality, women's safety, women's economic security, women's health and wellbeing. This task force will be co-chaired by Minister Payne and I. It will comprise all female members of my ministry, and there is quite a number. It will also be joined uh, by the portfolio ministers from what is known as the central agencies, the Treasurer, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for Finance. And I'll ask Minister Payne to speak a bit more about that in a moment once I've run through the changes to the ministry. So to those changes. Michaelia Cash will be Australia's next Attorney General and Minister for Industrial Relations. She has done an outstanding job for our government. She is a fine attorney and she is a fine parliamentarian. And I'm looking forward to her leadership in this role as she also holds the position of Deputy Leader of the Government in the Senate in recognition of her significant talents. Anne Ranston will join the leadership team of my government those 10 ministers who joined together um, on a very regular basis, of which Minister Payne is also a member. Uh, Anne Rustin will join that team and she will also have, it, ha have added to her title things that she is predominantly responsible for right now, and that is Minister for Women's Safety in Cabinet. Karen Andrews uh, will take on the job of Minister for Home Affairs. Karen has done an outstanding job in her role, particularly 
bringing together and championing Australia's advanced manufacturing strategy. She is a woman of great talent, of great experience and great practicality. I first put Karen into the Cabinet because I believed so heavily in her abilities. And uh, I'm so pleased with the job that she's done and now she's ready for a new job and I think she's going to do an outstanding job. As someone who once held those portfolio responsibilities in some respects, uh, you can forgive me by being pretty particular about who I appoint into Home Affairs and, uh, and she is going to do an outstanding job. Linda Reynolds uh, will, re will remain in Cabinet and will take on the portfolio of government services and the National Disability Insurance Scheme. I've been in regular contact with both Linda and her doctor at her, with her permission and she has recovered extremely well. And we have discussed her return to work and agreed that a domestic, follow, a, a domestic portfolio would be best uh, for her, but she is in good health and I know she will do an outstanding job in this area. She has previously served uh, on the committee for the NDIS and knows those issues extremely well. Uh, she's a, a very good uh, operational minister and so taking responsibility for government services and the continued rollout out of programs I think will smit, uh, fit her skills and talents well. Melissa Price will be returning to Cabinet, so I'll be expanding the Cabinet by one to where it was when Minister Cormann was in the Cabinet. Um, and she will retain the portfolio of defence industry. The defence industry portfolio has previously been in Cabinet um, and when Minister Pine held that portfolio, amongst others, and uh, he did a, an excellent job setting up this procurement program that we're involved in now, and I need a, a keen set of eyes continuing on those projects, significant as, as they are for the Australian Government and our defence and uh, she has been doing an outstanding job in the outer ministry in this area and I'm pleased that I'm able to bring her back into Cabinet uh, in that role. Uh, those five ministers uh, will join, of course, Minister Payne and, and Minister Lee, who will continue on in their roles as Foreign Affairs, Minister for Women and Susan Lee as in, uh, Minister for the Environment. And as you know, Minister Lee also uh, has the House duty uh, responsibilities for Minister for Women. Jane Hume will take on the additional portfolio uh, in the Outer Ministry of Women's Economic Security. And Amanda Stoker will take on the additional role of, she's currently uh, Assistant Minister to the Attorney General, she will add to that uh, Assistant Minister to the Minister for Industrial Relations, as well as Assistant Minister to the Minister for Women. Minister Payne will effectively become the leader of that group of women. Um, she is effectively um, amongst her female colleagues, uh, the Prime Minister for Women, uh, um, the, holding the prime ministerial re responsibilities in this area as the Minister for Women. It is her job to bring together this great talent and experience across not just the female members of my Cabinet team and the outer ministry and executive, but to draw also in the important contributions, especially in areas such as health and services and aged care and other key important roles that go so much to women's wellbeing in this country.